Some people are pissed off about a new law that would discriminate against individuals who are dual citizens of, or who have traveled to, Iraq, Sudan, Syria, and surprisingly, Iran. It's totally ridiculous. The law, sometimes referred to as HR 158, would block those people from participating in the Visa Waiver Program. Visa Waiver Program? What's that? I'm glad you asked, random person sitting on the bench. The Visa Waiver Program is an agreement between the United States and 38 other countries to allow their citizens to travel within those countries for up to 90 days without having to apply for a visa. Okay, so why are some people pissed off? Well, in response to the San Bernardino terrorist attack and recent calls on the government to protect us from future attacks, the Congress decided that foreigners in VWP countries who hold dual citizenship of or who have traveled to Syria, Iraq, Sudan, or Iran since March 2011 would be barred from the visa waiver program and would have to apply for a visa to come to the U.S., unlike their fellow citizens. Okay, so does that affect American citizens? Not directly. But the program is based on reciprocity, which means that European countries or other VWP countries could retaliate by enacting similar legislation targeting American citizens. That sounds like an attack on civil liberties. You should talk to the ACLU about that. Is this visa waiver law discriminatory? Yeah, absolutely. So it's also completely arbitrary. So there's no indication, for example, that a person who has ancestry in Iran has any more relationship to terrorism than a person who has ancestry from Ireland or from any other country. It has nothing to do with whether they possibly came into contact with a terrorist organization or something like that, which is ostensibly the reason for excluding them from the visa waiver program. Bottom line, Dror Ledeen at the ACLU said the new visa waiver restrictions are discriminatory. Still, I wondered, would the so-called Visa Waiver Program Improvement and Terrorist Travel Prevention Act of 2015, would it improve national security at all? I asked Richard Nephew, one of the former American nuclear negotiators who also served as the Iran director on President Obama's national security staff. So do you think that the inclusion of Iran is uh, increasing national security in any way in the United States, in any measurable way? No, I don't think so. I mean, ultimately, my own view is that the risk of terrorism coming from Iran is a state-sponsored terrorism threat. It's the degree to which the Iran Revolutionary Guard Corps and people in the security services are providing support for terrorism. I, I don't actually believe that there is much threat coming from radicalizing individuals who have been to Iran. Why was Iran included in that list of countries that are barred from the visa waiver program? Well, I think you know, the visa waiver issue really started off as something dealing with Syria and Iraq. And it was attempting to deal with the problem of people who have gone to those active uh, war zones and been radicalized in some fashion. My, my own sense, and I'm not in Washington anymore, but my own sense is that someone asked the question, well, shouldn't we have all state sponsors of terrorism also added to that list? Iran is still designated a state sponsor of terrorism by the United States, and so I think it got swept up into that. Beyond the issues of discrimination and national security, I wanted to get a sense of how the new visa waiver restrictions, which just went into effect, were beginning to impact people. My name is Amin Chokolahi. I uh, live currently in Switzerland. Um, I am a mathematician slash computer scientist, uh, and now also an electronics uh, specialist. Um, I have been uh, working in the field for the last 25 years. Um, I'm a very well-known researcher worldwide. Um, I had already made my travel arrangements a long time ago and didn't think that this will affect it at all. And uh, well, um, I realized that it did. I wasn't even not notified. I had to actually go to the ESTA site to see whether my travel authorization is valid. And as of Friday, it was uh, canceled. So you're kind of a, in a way, a as both a businessman and an academic, someone who travels, of course, across the Atlantic, kind of a prime candidate for someone who should have easy travel, who, who, sh who could benefit essentially from a visa waiver program. That is to say, you are someone who would, who would utilize it and utilize it for a greater possible yes, social, and, social and economic yeah. good as well. No, absolutely. I mean, I travel to the U.S. Uh, uh, four to six times a year. Uh, for business. In fact, on this travel, I was supposed to close uh, business for several million dollars. And uh, it's a bit unfortunate. So, you know, I, I really don't know what to do. It is absolutely ridiculous to target people who have visited Iran for with this law because 
There's so many of them. I, mean, I have so many colleagues who, who travel to Iran. They're, they're not Iranians. They go there, you know, they meet with people, they meet with students, they meet with others. And now all of a sudden, they have to apply for U.S. visa. Actually, the, the, the head of my university uh, went there on a, on a delegation. And you know, now he has to apply for U.S. visa. This is just, you know, it's totally ridiculous. To follow Amin Shukralahi's case and learn what you can do to reverse this discriminatory legislation, visit us-iran.org backslash visa waiver and follow me on Twitter at Kayvon Afshari.